Hello students, today I will talk about third numerical on plane motion of rigid bodies, forces and acceleration. So let us read the problem. A cord is wrapped around a homogeneous disc of radius r equal to 0.5 meter and mass m 15 kilogram. If the cord is pulled upward with a force t of magnitude 180 newton, determine the acceleration of the center of the disc the angular acceleration of the disc the acceleration of the cord now this diagram is given to us what is uh, given in this diagram we have a homogeneous disc this circle shows us homogeneous disc and uh, around this uh, disc there is one cord attached at this particular point and wrapped around the disc so the radius of the disc is given to us 0.5 and mass of the disc is also given it is 15 kg. Now what he says if the cord is pulled if we pull this cord in our direction T is shown over here if we will pull the cord in our direction with a force T whose magnitude is also given 180 Newton what will be the acceleration of the center of the disc. Now in order to understand uh, or in order to solve this particular problem we first have to understand uh, what is happening in this particular problem. Now when you will pull this particular cord in our direction what will happen in this disc uh, there will be three possible motions. This disc can travel along x direction there will be some acceler acceleration along x axis there will be there can be some acceleration along y axis as well and this particular disc will start rotation it means that will result into rate of change of angular momentum as well so uh, let us first draw the free body of this particular problem it means what we have to represent in the free body we will first draw the disc and on this disc we will show this tension at point a in our direction that is actually the force pulling force which is 180 newton and the next force to attach in the free body is the weight of the disc acting in downward direction now it is not shown that uh, it is uh, supported somewhere so there will be no reaction shown over here so only two forces are acting that uh, the force pulling force at point A and weight acting in downward direction at G and the radius of course of the disc is 0.5 now in this force system there are only two forces and this force system is equivalent to what so this force system is capable of producing acceleration of the disc along x direction acceleration of the disc along y direction or these can result in the rotation of the disc as well that is i bar alpha rate of change of angular momentum now again all those uh, three equations are applicable over here so let us start with our first equation that is summation fx is equal to summation fx effective so let us see how many forces are acting in x direction and let us add those forces. If you see this force system there is no force acting in x direction. It means we have to write 0. Now is equal to what we at the start we assume that there can be acceleration of the disc along x direction. So we will write max is equal to 0. But from this equation what we will get that ax is equal to 0. So what we have concluded there is no acceleration of the disc along x direction. Now let us apply uh, the second uh, uh, equation that is summation Fy equal to summation Fy effective. So let us see how many uh, y direction forces are acting and add those forces. How many y direction forces? T and W. It is up, uh, acting in upward direction. Let us take it, take it as positive. This is negative acting in downward direction. So that's why for this we are writing T minus W. Now what effect they can produce? They can produce MAY that is acceleration of the disc in y direction. So equal to ma y bar. Bar is shown for the acceleration of the uh, g that is the center of gravity of the disc or the mass center we can say. So this is equal to what from here we will get the value of a bar y. So this will be equal to t minus w divided by m t minus w divided by m. So we have the value of t it is 180 newton. Then we have the value of w as well because we are given mass of the mass of the uh, disc as 15 kilogram so mass into g that will give us weight of the disc divided by m mass is 15 so from here we will get the second acceleration as well a var y is equal to 2.19 meter per second square 
so we got the answer of the first part what he was asking in the first part acceleration of the center of the disc so we have assumed that there can be two accelerations either the center of the disc uh, have can have the acceleration long x direction ax or long y direction ay so we have calculated both the values ax is equal to 0 and ay equal to 2.19 meter per second square now let us see what he is asked in the second uh, part or the b part what he says the angular acceleration of the disc so what is angular acceleration angular acceleration of the disc is alpha so it means now we have to apply the third equation what is that equation summation <coughs> mg equal to summation mg effective so means whatever forces are acting in this particular system take their moment about mass center g and equate equal to their effect what effect they are producing about g so there are two forces in the system this force is acting in our direction so it will generate clockwise movement so that moment will be taken as negative and w is actually acting at mm, the moment center so moment because of this will be zero so it means if we have to calculate summation mg we will use only t so it is producing clockwise moment so take that as negative so negative magnitude is t into what is the perpendicular distance it is 0.5 so right now over here it is written as r radius of the disk so this will produce what it will result into rate of change of angular momentum fine that is i bar alpha now you see these two are actually acting at g so their perpendicular distance from mass center is zero so moment because of these two will be zero so we are only left with i bar alpha on the right hand side as well so from here let us see what values we have to put now i bar it is a moment of inertia of this disc about the center so about a circular disc the moment of inertia is given by this formula i uh, half mr square this you have to remember so replace this moment of inertia by this formula into alpha so from this particular uh, uh, equation we will get value of alpha that is angular acceleration so angular acceleration will be equal to minus 2t divided by mr so t value 180 m is 15 that is the mass of the disk r is the radius of the disk 0.5 so from here we will get value of the second part of the question that is angular acceleration of the disk now let us focus on the third part of the problem what he says acceleration uh, acceleration of the cord now uh, we have to find the acceleration of the cord now in order to find the acceleration of this cord uh, you see the acceleration of the cord will be equal to the tangential acceleration at a of the disc fine so we will say that uh, for finding the acceleration of the cord v a cord will be equal to tangential acceleration at uh, point a of the disc fine because acceleration of the cord will be equivalent to tangential acceleration at a of the cord because cord is attached at a when you will pull it fine <clears throat> now what we have to do then so there is one important point to understand that tangential acceleration of the disc at a is because of two uh, accelerations first we have found that there is acceleration of mass center along y direction and there is rotation of the disc also so <clears throat> acceleration tangential acceleration at point a of the disc will be will have two components first that is the acceleration of the disc along y direction and acceleration that is tangential acceleration at a because of this rotation so that's why we have written tangential acceleration at a will be equal to acceleration of mass center along y plus tangential acceleration at a because of the rotation so we know this is equal to what it is always equal to r alpha this we have learned in the previous videos fine so what is a, a r by this we have already calculated put that value over here and uh, r alpha r is 0.5 radius of the disk r alpha we have already calculated 48 so when you will put these values you will get your final answer that is acceleration of the cord so the new thing in this numerical was related to the acceleration of the cord so once again i am repeating for finding the acceleration of the cord we have to find tangential acceleration at a point a of the disk so for point a of the disk there will be two accelerations one is acceleration of the disk along y direction another is tangential acceleration at a because of the rotation fine so that is why this formula is used to find the last part of the problem i hope this particular numerical is clear to you thank you very much